Hello everyone, it is Suzanne Wagner and we are doing the numerology and the astrology for October 13th, 2020. If you add all those numbers together, you get the number 9. The number 9 is a completion number. It's the place where once again we come full circle. Um, the number 9 brings discernment and integrative awareness when it is done right. So um, I always love the different systems like in Tarot, um, I associate the number nine um, actually with the Aeon card in the in the Trumps because it's that place where you've learned the lessons of the Major Arcana and you've come full circle and you've come into this place where you're just like, huh, okay, I've got more discernment. I see the pattern. I see the problem. I see um, how I co-contribute to that problem. And uh, I feel more calm and I'm more in alignment with my truth and I'm more in alignment with my own intuition balanced with my cognitive knowing and when you have those two together it's it's awesome okay so integrative awareness discernment um would be the two groups of thoughts i would have with this um so when you're in denial of what you intuitively hear see and feel you can kind of end up in a pile of misery and i know i mean i learned this lesson years ago that not following a direct piece of information that comes in spontaneously from the divine through intuition is a very, very bad idea. <laughs> so the only times I've ever really gotten hurt were those moments when a piece of information came in loud and clear and then my ego decided that I was just not going to listen to that tidbit and instead I was going to do exactly what I wanted regardless of the warning. I believe that we are all born with that innate intuitive knowing as a fail-safe mechanism for survival and unfortunately our culture doesn't allow that um, instinct to be trained as much as it probably should and so most people don't know how to use it or how to work with it um, especially that kind of subtle energy as it moves through our universe and that's why today is a great day to practice so you know today listen to your intuition use your discernment look at the lessons that you've learned in the past notice where those those lessons come back up so whenever i learn a lesson um the universe tests me three times and so it's kind of like did you get that lesson are you paying attention i mean like i'm going to put that same situation in front of you again are you going to fall for it a second time and hopefully you're like ah i see that coming oh i know that place no i am not going there again and then the next time gets a little less of his test and the next time it's just like eh, you know it's like I kind of know that all right astrology for today it is a busy and intense day in the world of astrology not like anybody really wants to hear that at this point I, I know you're so sick of me saying this it's like you know I mean I feel like I've been you know trying to warn everybody like how intense this is going to get and and it should be feeling pretty intense at this point so if yeah if things feel complicated today you would be right um, the Sun is opposite a retrograde Mars and Aries and it is right in the middle of the firestorm of change so literally you know the Mars uh, the Aries retrograde is right in its middle position okay and um, a retrograde Mars and Aries is a lot to deal with especially as this one lasts from June 28th through mid January of 2021 and I'm sure you can feel the reactivity in everyone around you I am sure you can feel that impulsive quality wanting to do various forms of battle <laughs> there is a stubborn willfulness in the air paths feel tricky and difficult circumstances push you to the breaking point it is where you have to decide what is your path and what is not if you acquiesce to the issues of another you will notice that your body will not let you go down a path that is not yours to follow we are in a time where choices and decisions are critical and you are running out of time to step cleanly and clearly into this new matrix that is evolving right now your awareness is elevated so you really know what is making you happy or unhappy angry or fulfilled resentful or expansive notice what you are feeling and use that information to become more and complete um, it is through the battles of conflict that we discover what is really important to us after all the journey is to understand who 
you really are and to discover the hidden places that you are still holding that have skills that you have not used and the magic that you have not encountered. So it's not necessarily bad. The universe is just pushing you to step into some skill sets that you haven't been utilizing. Know that many may feel hot-headed, looking for a fight, so keep a cool head and remember to be kind. Some are so exhausted by all this that they are itching for a fight because of the buildup of tension over the past seven months. Back up your computer because in a few days Mercury is going retrograde and it can make electronics glitchy. So like already my speaker on my computer, one side speaker is off. It's echoing and doing a glitchy thing. So I, I have to order one of those separate um, uh, disc uh, microphones, you know, to, to make the sound from my from you to me if I'm doing a reading better it's so crazy it's like I'm like of course you know something's going wrong right now um, now that mercury retrograde starts out in Scorpio and know that you're going to go deeper under this aspect it's a great time to journal to take a look at what's under your conscious mind and you know you're looking for meaningful connections you know with others more and more the world looks sort of odd and different Difficult times bring up heightened awareness. Observe with this energy, but do not make critical decisions for the next few weeks with this craziness. The moon continues in sunny Leo, helping out a more difficult day on many levels. So keep that smile on your face and let your heart lead in all decisions and choices. Um, so, I have not done a quote for today yet. You might notice that it will be on my blog and, and somewhere as the day progresses, but I'm trying to do a whole bunch of things in my garden today, and, you know, needless to say, everything is happening all at once right now because the weather is changing and turning and all this kind of stuff. So, it's canning time, so we're, we're doing a whole bunch of things. Anyway, um, so, but my blog today. What was the first lesson you learned in life? Um, usually it is the beliefs formed while you were being born. That first independent thought, that first feeling that needed to have a way to make sense. I loved rebirthing or connected breath therapy or holotropic breath work um, because it really helped me to discover that initial expression of what your thoughts and conclusions that you formed from, from those thoughts, either in the womb or just at the time of birth, and how those actually continue to impact you. So many, many years ago when I was in my 20s, um, I did a extensive rebirthing session with a woman in Florida who had a um, hot tub that was enclosed and it so she could make it totally dark, so she could make it like a womb. And you would go in there with a snorkel and a nose clip and she would float you in this perfectly temperatured water um, that was like 98.6 um, and you got to re-experience your birth like you literally re-experienced your birth and I was there for a week and we would be in the water for anywhere from one and a half to three hours a day and then you would like write and and journal and unwind some things and um, what came up for me personally um, was that, you know, my mother in my generation, you know, they gave women anesthetics when they were um, giving birth. And so here I was, I was ready to go and, you know, ready to push with my legs. And all of a sudden the anesthetic hit me and all of a sudden my legs went out from underneath me and I, I, I felt stuck. I felt trapped. And, you know, my mother says, well, you were out in three hours. Like, you were like, get me the hell out of here. Like, so I, I say this, my experience as a baby is a different experience than she was having, right? So I wasn't one of these children that was a 36 hour labor or something like that. I was the second child. But my experience of being in the womb, being in there, feeling the anesthetic take over my body and me feeling stuck was the experience of, oh my God, you, meaning my mother, said you were going to help me through this and you were going to help me get out of here. And now I can't feel anything. And um, does that mean I'm going to have to do everything on my own, everything myself? And that was the first initial independent thought form that I formed, which uh, was I'm going to have to do it all myself. 
And so at that point in my 20s, I looked at that and went, wow, that was so true. That thought has literally colored my life. Like, I have to do everything myself. And so, you know, I'm incredibly independent. I don't ask for help very much. If I ask for help, I usually really need help, right? And so it's not my normal way, you know, at all. It's like, so it was a thought form that initiated my brain. It was the first neurological pathway that was formed in my brain and all the other pathways come off of that. So I've had to actively, consciously, constructively look at all the places, you know, that I uh, don't know how to let people in because of that thought pattern. And so I have to like consciously say, hmm, am I actually doing this on my own just because this is the pattern I always do? Or, you know, does somebody actually really want to help me? And so learning that people do want to help has been a really re revelatory experience. It's been really cool to kind of notice that other people want to help. And I use myself as the example because um, I think those original thought patterns that happen when we're born color our world and they're very deeply unconscious. And I have people all the time that say to me, I don't know why I do that. I know that's completely insane. Why do I do that? Right? And and they don't even know why they're doing it. And I, I keep pulling people backwards trying to get them to look at what are the thought forms that have happened when you were born that are related to this in any way or a thought form that was formed in a trauma or a, a problem or a situation um, and how you create these loops, you create these self-fulfilling prophecies. So like, you know, the pattern I was doing in my 20s was like, oh, well, nobody ever helps me. And I'm like, wait a second, um, you don't let anybody help you, you know. <laughs> so and while on many levels that was good, it, it, you know, it made me highly responsible. Like I don't expect anybody, you know, to take responsibility for me ever, you know. Um, and I'm very independent. Um, but it also, you know, doesn't necessarily let people in. And so there, that's the tricky thing about you know these double binds like you know you get mad because nobody's helping you but you're actually creating the situation and the circumstances that allow that to actually happen so look at yourself what are the patterns that you keep doing how could those patterns possibly be related to your birth trauma your birth experience ask your mother um, you know what was I like when I was a baby what was she like <coughs> when you were a baby was she ill? Was she distracted? Was she overwhelmed? Uh, did she have five other kids? Um, you know, did you not get enough attention? What beliefs did you form from that? Um, and recognize how a lot of souls are running around trying to get what they didn't get, but they're doing it from a place that they're actually sabotaging it because of that belief system that was formed. And these things take a lot of conscious awareness. I mean, just FYI. You know, I mean, like, I work on these things all the time. It's like, oh, I'm doing it again, right? <laughs> so, so this is that place where, you know, just be gentle with yourself um, because we're in a time where people have been cloistered and, and in quarantine for a long time and shit is coming up. Like, unresolved issues, unresolved patterns are definitely coming up and start looking at what do they mean. I mean, the internet is great because you can go on the internet and say, what does this actually mean? You know, what what is the pattern here that's related to it? <clears throat> and so, you know, try to take a look at what your body is telling you. Try to take a look at what your loops in your life are trying to tell you. And try to figure out where they come from, their originating point, and then try to be conscious enough so that when you start to go into the loop, that right before you hit that door, you stop yourself and go, this is going to be that loop. Let's not do that. Can we, can we do something else? Okay. Thanks, everybody. Have a good day.